Hi, welcome. We're talking about Euler's, oh, sorry, Euler's method. This is the um, first in a series of BC calculus topics. Okay, uh, what is Euler's method? In essence, we're trying to build a function from a derivative. So this is what we're, um, we're going to move into this phrase called linear approximation. So suppose if we know a lot of information about the derivative of a function, especially if you know like x, y points, and you know some information about um, function points, uh, f specifically at a single point, if you know any information about that function, well, you can build an approximate look of what that graph is going to look like using what we call local linearity. And I'm going to show you what that looks like visually. But this pro this procedure, this like iteration, um, and as y'all saw in class, it was just a lot of this. It was very, very simplistic, but it's the same pattern over and over and over and over again. And that's really all we're doing. But how does it actually work? And so here's a visual representation of what that would look like. If this was my delta x or my delta t, my, my, my change in my independent variable, I could estimate at each point and look at its slope very individually. And the smaller my step size is, the better the approximation of that original function is going to be. Because what I'm doing here is I'm simply tracking back I'm working with little bits little sections what is the point here x x original y original x1 y1 x2 y2 x3 y3 that's all you're doing is that you're tracking back you're working through it to create an original function kind of the same way that when we're looking at a slope field we can kind of sketch out what's actually happening in that's in that in that so yeah, can't speak in that slope field and that kind of helps us recognize the the shape of the graph uh, real quick, one more note one I wanted to say on this page was, remember Riemann sums where we would do little tiny slices and we would get this big picture and it would be an estimation of the accumulation under uh, the curve or the area under the curve. But then we figured out that there's a, there's a very exact way to do it. Well, this is kind of the same thing, except we kind of saw a um, an exact way we saw a closer approximation but then we talked about differential equations that didn't work differential equations where we couldn't easily solve and so when we looked at those differential equations we can apply Euler's method so this is you know working the other way around so we have the exact approximate the exact answer and now we're working on how to estimate when we can't find an exact value so again here's another visual representation of what we what I mean by local linearity and approximation so if we have some function and we have an original value of x naught y naught, so that means x original, y original. If I look at it moving to the right, we can call that delta x. So I can change. That means my x original plus delta x would be that next x value. And we can do the same exact thing if we're talking about the y. So we get two new points if we talk about x1 and y1. So if I move my x over, that's going to be the original x value plus that change. If I move that y over, it's going to be the original y value plus that change. So that's where these formulas came from for that original, for that x, y, uh, x1, y1. That's where those, are, those formulas came from. But more than that, the formula doesn't end there. In fact, what we're actually looking at is the tangent line. I'm hitting at exactly one point. So we're looking at what's called tangent line approximation. That is what Euler's method is. And so I know that the tangent line at that point is my instantaneous rate of change, which I can represent as f prime of that initial point. Well, I know that f prime is the same as saying delta y over delta x. It's my slope. Slope's formula is change in y over change in x. So I can take that and I can solve forward, right? I can uh, solve for delta y. I can take that delta x up, bring it to the other side, and I get this equation right here. So now I've taken a moment to solve for delta y. So we're actually going to work with these, this equation up here. This is the equation you need to have memorized, and this is the equation you need to know how to use as best as possible. That is not what I wanted. Okay, well, we're gonna just try again. <laughs> This is the formula. Make sure you have this information right here memorized. If you want to memorize this, that's fine. But know the formula for delta y, one or the other. It's your choice how you want to see that. So just some standard steps and procedures. The very first thing you need to start with is some sort of differential equation, either the y prime or the dy dx, however it's kind of given to you. You need information about the solution. What's the solution of a differential equation? We track back. So the derivative is the info, the solution would be the equation. So if y prime is my differential, then y is my solution. That's how we work differential equations. So you need some information about a point that lies on that graph. Either you have both parts, which is standard. We typically give both parts. Or if we're kind of doing an you know, AP structure where we give you 
all of this and there's a whole row of missing information right here solve for the missing information we do like to do questions like that in fact i have a question like that in my example the next thing you're going to need is the information about your step sites remember just like remon size remon sums the smaller the step size the more accurate your predictions but just like with remon sums the smaller your step size the more work you have to do and finally, just we had those equations, but what are those equations? So I went ahead and wrote it out as kind of something more standard. My new X should be my old X plus my delta X, which is my step size. My new Y should be my old Y plus delta Y. But what, what we know, delta Y is different in the equation. So I wrote it again. My new Y is my old Y plus my slope at the old point times my uh what am I trying to say? Step size, my delta X. So that does not change. So here's my first example. We are given that F of zero is equal to one and a table of values gives us our derivative using Euler method with step size one approximate F of three. So what important information was I just given? Well, I was given that F of zero equals one. I was given that we have a step size or a delta X of one. I know that I'm looking for F approximate of three. So the biggest thing that I want to do is create a table because every time I create that table, it's going to help me identify what we're trying to identify. So I need F prime, uh, F prime and X, but guess what? They already gave me that information. I was already ready to do the next couple of examples that don't have a table. They gave me that information, but if I wasn't given this information, I should make sure to pause and write this information down somewhere. I should create a table. And this is technically, if we wanted to look at our n values, this would be our uh, n0, n1, n2, and n3. So we know our initial value. We know x not and why not? Why? Because it was given to me right here. This is the same as seeing a coordinate point, 0, comma, 1. So that's our coordinate point. 0, comma, 1. We're also going to need x1, y1. We're also going to need x2, y2. And what are we trying to approximate at? At 3. So that means we're also going to need x3, y3. And that's probably going to be our end answer. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this because this is um, important information that we're going to track backwards to. But over here, I'm going to do all of my work. So how do I find x of 1? So how do I find the new x? Well, that's going to be equal to my old x which is my original X, so zero, plus my delta Y. And my delta Y is going to be my slope at that point times my, uh, oh, I am getting ahead of myself. I am looking at my Y value, my sincerest apology. My new X is going to be equal to my old X plus step size. That's it. So that's just zero plus one. That's just one. I was thinking about my new Y. My new Y is going to be my old Y plus the slope at that point times uh, my chain, my my delta, my delta x, my step. So we know that's simply going to be times one, which that's okay. That's going to just disappear. But what was my slope at that point? Well, my slope information was given to me right here. My f prime was already given to me. So f prime when x equals zero is this number right here. So that becomes two. One plus two is simply three. So now we have a new coordinate point over here. We have one comma three. Now we do that whole pattern all over again. I think I'm going to run out of time, but I'm going to try and go as quickly as possible. So my x2, my new x is going to be the previous x. So x1, one plus step size. So that's just going to be two. Here's where it gets funky. Here's my y2. That's going to be the previous y. So three plus the slope at that point times one. Well, the slope at y1 is right here, or x, x1 is negative 1. So that becomes plus negative 1, which is the same as saying 3 minus 1, which is 2. So we, now we have another coordinate point at 2, comma, 2. And our final spot, which should get us to our answer, our approximation of f, f of 3, is x3 is going to be equal to x2, so 2 plus 1, which is our change, our delta, our step size, which is just 3. And our y3, is going to be equal to our previous y plus the slope at that point is 1. 1 times 1 is 3, or 2 plus 1 is 3. So that means we have a point at 3, comma, 3. And that's our answer. Our end approximation, f of 3, is approximately 3. And that is our answer. I think my video is going to cut off, so we'll see you in part 2.